Chancellor Patton, President Gertler, members of the Platform Party, family and friends of the graduating class, and most importantly, the class of 2022, greetings. Shortly after President Gertler called me in the spring to tell me about the honorary degree, the university followed up by saying that I could speak about anything, but only for eight minutes. My longtime partner, Gerald Sheff, advised me to ignore this time limit, as the university was unlikely to ask the Mounties to carry me off. <laughs> Nevertheless, I will comply with the university's wishes. <clears throat> I bring good news. Today's problems are big, but they're not unique. Many times in the past, the litany of problems seemed insoluble. Inevitably, most of them will recede or go away completely. Yes, there will be replacement problems, but I urge you to concentrate on the exciting opportunities that await you. I am a great believer in good luck. You might think brains and hard work are the key to your success. Well, some. But never underestimate the role of luck in getting where you want to go. Just by being here today, we're among the luckiest people on the earth. So you have a head start. In my case, I was fortunate to be born in this country of Canada with supportive parents and good health. Canada was a great country then and remains so today. In fact, there have been dramatic improvements in attitudes towards the diversity and immigrants. You've also been lucky to graduate from a top business school. Rotman, a top university, University of Toronto. I have not forgotten that you've endured two years of the pandemic and its impact. But we outside the university have also suffered. Life must go forward. The majority of you are going into business. I applaud this goal. Canada needs new business leaders, whether they're working in large corporations or have gone the entrepreneurial route. Some of you will live merry middle-class lives and be very happy. I'm not critical of this. But some of you will be very successful, and I want to focus on this group. There is no need to be apologetic about success, unless you're engaged in something illegal. <clears throat> yes, there are many flaws in our free enterprise society, but the majority of the participants are mostly honest and straightforward. Some of you may recall a famous movie called Wall Street, where the chief villain proclaimed, greed is good. I am ambiguous about this statement. I applaud business leaders who create new markets, new jobs, and new wealth. But I'm aware there's more to life than just making money. Although I had a middle-class upbringing, I have mingled with wealthy people and business leaders for many decades. This is strictly a function of working in the investment world and co-creating a firm designed to deal with affluent people. But in my view, the truly successful members of your class will become both business leaders and great philanthropists. I am very optimistic about uh, outlook for this graduating class. The world does belong to young people. The main reason I say youth progress is inevitable is the role that technology plays in everyday business and personal life. Who could argue against the fact that younger people can handle technology better than their elders. Now that I've put you in a good place, what are you going to do after you graduate? It is very popular today to want to be an entrepreneur in an early age. I commend this aspiration, but suggest that a few years working in a large organization would be beneficial to skill sets and resumes. Do you need to have a long-term game plan or take one day at a time? I don't have a strong view. In my case, I was an undergraduate in commerce and finance at the University of Toronto. Back then, Rotman did not exist. 
Our class had some great professors, but much of the education was moisted on me at that moment. I enjoyed school, but did not have a clue about what I was going to do till late in my fourth year. A variety of life insurance companies were hiring for their investment departments. I had several interviews and chose to join the Canada Life, Canada's oldest insurance company. I loved the investment world from the first day and still do, almost 60 years later. Canada Life was very conservative and very bureaucratic and didn't pay well, but it was a terrific place to learn. Joining a conservative institution was good for me as I suffer from speculative tendencies. Five years later, I joined an aggressive mutual fund, which was acquired three years later. So I entered the brokerage business with five partners. This is my introduction to the entrepreneurial world. We are a modest success, but nothing like the good fortune that was yet to come when 12 years later, I teamed up with Gerald Sheff to form the money management firm Gluskin Sheff & Associates. We really had no game plan other than raising an initial fund, but our timing was perfect and we flourished. I loved being an entrepreneur and still do, but my message is to you, don't be in such a hurry. All sorts of large companies are keen to hire Rotman graduates. There is much to be learned from large companies. When I graduated, the great majority of large companies were stodgy. They're all run by older white people. The word diversity did not exist, and women were relegated to lesser roles. Today, large companies have to be smarter to survive, and employing the latest technology is a necessity, not an option. So my big question to you, if you happen to be financially successful, there's great satisfaction in being responsible for providing jobs for people, entering new markets, and generating your own wealth. Providing is legal, of course. What happens if you had a home run, financially speaking, and are able to acquire the proverbial yacht? In case you didn't notice, I'm a staunch free enterprise advocate. I understand the limitations of governments at all levels. I have some knowledge of universities hospitals, and cultural institutions. Governments do not have the financial capacity to fully support these entities. There is no other conclusion other than free enterprise must step up where governments fail. Our alternative is more of a socialist state. The best example I can give you is our host, the University of Toronto. They are prodigious fundraisers. Look around the campus, around the city. You will see donors' names everywhere. I recommend this to be your goal. Think about Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. Why is he famous today? Not because he was a genius software developer, but because he's a world-scale philanthropist. Closer to home, think about the late Peter Monk, whose name graces many institutions in our city. Are there no timers? Who remembered what enabled Peter to be a donor? By the way, if you want to grow up and be the anonymous donor, so be it. In conclusion, thanks again to the University of Toronto for giving me this honor.